All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Living the Dream podcast. Today on the show, we have Nancy Picard, who is a master integrative life coach and mentor that does shadow work and marriage and relationship work. She is also the author of the best-selling book, Bigger, Better, Braver. Conquer your fears, embrace your courage, and transform your life. Nancy, how you doing? I'm great. Thanks for that intro. Of course. Yeah. Thanks for coming on the show. And we like to jump right in. So if you could start with telling us a little bit more about yourself and what you like to do for fun, that'd be great. Oh, that's easy. I'm I'm very athletic. So I live in Aspen, Colorado, and I either am skiing or hiking or biking or pickleballing or yoga every single day. I take a few hours off of work every single day to be outdoors and play. I got you. Does it take a lot, a lot of time to like set up to ski or can you do that in like an hour or two? No, because I live right in town. So my skis are right here. I get on a little bus right outside my door that goes two and a half minutes and I'm on the mountain. So maybe I waste like maybe 30 minutes there and back and taking off all my equipment and doing all of that. And I ski for two hours and that's my day. There we go. I got you. Well, tell us a little bit more about what you do as a master integrative life coach. Okay. So um, I coach mainly one-on-one, you know, people buy packages and I I work with them one-on-one and people come to me for a, a ton of different things. Either they want a new job or they're sabotaging themselves or they want a relationship or they want to get out of a relationship or they want to move across the country or they don't have a healthy lifestyle. They want to lose weight. They want to exercise. There's always some real place where they're stuck and they're not making the changes that they want to make. And the reason they're not making them is that they're living in their disempowering beliefs, which I refer to as shadow beliefs, and their fears. So instead of using their fears as a driving force for change, which is what I try to get my clients to do, they are stuck in their fears and they stay small and they they believe all the stuff that their brain is telling them, I'm not enough, I'm not good enough, my needs don't matter, my voice doesn't matter, Uh, I'm unlovable, I'll never be enough, all the things that have come out of our childhood, either from situations that happened, or actually things we've heard people say, our parents, our teachers, our older siblings, that gave us these beliefs that are hidden in our subconscious, and they keep us playing small, and they keep us stuck. So most people who come to me are not living as fully as they could, as they can, and they're stuck in their fears and their shadow beliefs. Mm, I gotcha. I gotcha. I noticed you said that you try to help your clients use fear as a motivator to change or use it as like fuel to change. Can you Mm -hmm. elaborate a bit on that on some ways people would go about doing that? Yeah. So for me personally, anytime an opportunity comes my way, which happens all the time, And the little imposter syndrome will say, oh, that's too big for you. Or say, I think they think they're more than you are. That kind of stuff Mm -hmm. that we all have and we all say, I know I have to jump in. I know I have to do that. And because I'm also an athlete, I use my, my athleticism and skiing down double black diamonds. And I went and climbed Kilimanjaro a couple of years ago and all of those kinds of sports things that I also have fear around, I know I have to do it. I'll say, well, if you can't do this, you'll never be able to climb Kilimanjaro. Or if you don't do this, you'll never be able to do that. So I'm very aware aware when I hear the fear, but I don't give into it. I use it as a signal for me to jump in. I got you. I got you. So whenever you feel fear, you're like, that's an indicator, not that I shouldn't do something, but that I should. Exactly. You know, I mean, it's not like I heard a noise and I go outside to check it out at two o'clock in the morning. I mean, it's not those kind of fears, but it's all the personal fears that would keep me smaller than I need to be. Yeah. 
So I always, I have a really strong growth mindset. I'm always trying new things and I'm always doing the things that I'm afraid to do because I now know through practice that my growth is on the other side. Hmm. I love that. And so do you have a phrase that you say to yourself, like when that imposter syndrome stuff starts to pop up and you're like, you're not enough, you can't do this, all that, blah, 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 blah. Do you have a phrase that you say that really speaks to your heart when that starts to happen? Bigger, better, braver. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Which is your book. So tell us a little it bit about It's my book. And that is why I that's that is what I live. It's the truth. And um and even I'm a parenting coach and I'm also a grandmother with four grandchildren and I'll I do the same thing. What did you do today that was bigger, better, braver? Not, I don't look at the, I think that the juice is in the journey. I don't look for like, oh, you're so smart or you were so successful. I look about what did you do that you were afraid to do? How are you braver today? Those are the things that you want to teach your children and you want to teach yourself. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. So is conquering your fears, embracing your courage and transforming your life. Can all that be encapsulated in feeling the fear and then acting on that and not letting yourself to be limit, not letting yourself be limited? Or are there more aspects to that that you want to talk about? Well, the aspects are that all of the anxiety and all the fear is like on this side of the activity. Mm -hmm. And so the more time you spend before you jump in, the more anxiety and the higher your cortisol and the more fears and the more ruminating, everything's here. And the moment you take a step in, it all dissipates. So number one, that's one part of it. And then the other is chunk it down. You want little tiny bite size stepping outside your comfort zone activities so you can start to prove to yourself you can do hard things if you fail you failed forward you get up you dust yourself off you look to see what you could have done better how could you have shown up is there somebody you need to speak to to get more information like not it's not always how do i do something but who can I ask that knows how to do it, that can help me? So I use failure as just a stepping stone. And, you know, I have a lot of clients that are afraid of failure or they're afraid of success or they're afraid of looking dumb. And I think to myself, don't you feel all those fears just by not stepping in? Yep. Like, isn't that more of a reason to feel stupid or, you know, like you're not measuring up by not even trying? Yeah. Yeah. So, absolutely. right. And what's you interesting there that. is you're like, especially when you feel those people pleasing has been was one of the things that I really had to break down in my life. Mm -hmm. And you'll you'll be OK feeling that when you're the only one seeing that you feel that. But the second somebody else sees it, it's like you want other people to think more highly of you than you think of yourself, which was an interesting uh, thing that like I dealt with a little bit of like, yeah, d doesn't it feel silly that you're so scared that you don't put out an offer on that real estate or that you don't make that call or that you don't send that email or that you don't do the activity you know you need yeah. to do? And yeah. it's like, I was just so caught up in other people's opinion of me that it was one of the things that stopped me and what it really was was me just not caring about me interesting well yes exactly and also what i find is that when you don't show up authentically and you are people pleasing and you're twisting yourself up in a pretzel to be digestible to other people what really happens is that deep inside your own mind you don't think you're good enough and you yep. think if they knew the real me, they wouldn't like me. Yep. They only like me because they're only seeing what I'm letting them see. And because I'm people pleasing and trying to be everything to everybody. And so what that really does deep inside to your inner child is it weakens you and it yep. makes you feel worse about yourself. So when you said 
something, I, I don't know your exact words, but it was something about how you treat other people better than you. You think higher. Other people think higher of you than you think about yourself because you're not showing up authentically. When you actually stay in alignment with everything you say you're going to do and you do it and you follow through and you say, you know, I'm a boundary coach. It's one of the things I coach in. So when you start to say no, unless it's a hell yes, if you start to say no, I'm sorry, you know what? I'm not available for that. Yes, I understand I was available last month, but I'm just not available for that anymore. When you start to make yourself a priority and set healthy boundaries, then you start to love yourself more. Mm -hmm. And that's what you exude out in the world. And then that's what you want people. You want people to love the real you, not the fake you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Nancy, tell us a little bit more about your motivation. What really gets you up and keeps you going every day? Oh, you know, I think it's, I think it's my growth mindset. I think it's wanting to be everything I can be. I really wanted you to say bigger, better, braver. Like I, I honestly <laughs> think bigger, better, braver is a valid answer to like most of the questions I'm going to ask. <laughs> but okay. You essentially okay. said it. It's because mindset. I want to be bigger, better, braver. But but it's true. It's like, I, I'm not resting on my laurels, right? I mean, I'm 66 years old. I hate to say that, but I'm 66 years old and I'm still trying new sports and getting new certifications all the time, reading new books, getting more tools for my clients. And I think that's what makes me so good because as a coach, because I'm not asking them to do anything that I don't do every single day. Yeah. I never, and, and because I'm holding other people accountable, I have to be able to hold myself accountable. And so that means being bigger, better, braver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so when you think about your dreams and goals, you know, vision for the rest of your life, are there any specific things or is it just that general trend towards bigger, better, braver? Well, this whole marriage and relationship coaching is new this year. So um, I'm in the program for like another year. And whether I will, my goal might be that I want to be a mentor for that someday, which will be like, it's almost like just more steps up, more steps up. I build courses, I get the courses out there. All of those things are all part of my business being bigger. Um, and believe it or not, I'm always working on my personal relationships. Like I'm trying to be the best mom and grandmother that I can be while I'm holding myself in warm regard, you know? So I'm not just overdoing and overgiving. I'm balancing being a really good grandparent and parent and partner to my partner while I'm making myself a priority. Yeah. yeah. And that's that's a lifetime job. It is. Yeah. <laughs> it really is. Well, that's awesome. So we got be a mentor in the as a marriage and relationship coach to grow your business and then mm -hmm. constantly improving your personal relationships while holding yourself in warm regard. Yes. Gotcha. Is there anything else you want to add to that list before we move on? Of uh, things that I want to accomplish. Well, I'm always I have bucket lists of trips. Mm -hmm. So I climbed uh, Machu Picchu. I climbed Kilimanjaro. I just got back from the Galapagos. So I still want to go to um, Patagonia. So um, I've, I've ridden my bikes all over the country, you know, like in Thailand, everywhere, Thailand and Vietnam and um, Italy. And I, I'm always like, an I'd like to have an adventure trip in my future. Yeah, I so got you. Those are the things. Where is the next place you're going to go? Um, next year I'm going to um in April uh, my partner are, are going to Bali and Singapore and Malaysia and that's on my list but it's not a athletic thing that's on my list so the next athletic thing that's on my list will be the next year and that'll be Patagonia gotcha. in Argentina and Chile 
There we go. There we go. Well, what are the top one to two skills that you need to develop right now to make these dreams and goals come true? I I don't know if this, I don't know if this sounds um, conceited, but I I have the skills. I'm no. I I have the skills. I'm working on the skills. I anything that's out there that I feel I want to do, I make it happen. And so the skills that I need to make it happen are integrity and um, which means integrity with my word, staying in alignment with my goals and visions and always just having like high values and valuing people and relationships and um, giving back and being a good partner and parent, like all of those things those those are the skills I need. So there's nothing stopping me. If anything stops me, it'll be me. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Do you have a routine that you go through to make sure you're not getting in your own way? And if you do, would you be willing to take us through it? Um, I think the only thing that would get in my way is negative self-talk. Mm -hmm. which I usually don't give into. So I usually do know that the negative self-talk is would keep me small and I push forward. And if I need support, you know, my, my uh, partner is so good at telling me, are you kidding me? You rock. You could do that. Yeah. You know, you need a supportive partner for those moments where you're not feeling sure of yourself. You need someone to see you clearly and say, babe, you got this. Just go do it. Because then you feel like, oh, God, now I have to go do it. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I, I do have fears. I um, This summer, I was in Aspen and my granddaughters were going with my son and their wife and his wife on a roller coaster in the woods. And I don't do roller coasters. I don't do rides. But but I had the baby and he was crying hysterically and I couldn't get him to calm down. He only wanted his mother. So his mom had to come off getting on the roller coaster and I had to get on. And I have been afraid of roller coasters my whole life. And now I'm on the roller coaster with my seven-year-old or my eight-year-old granddaughter who the whole time is saying, Nana, you have to be bigger, better, braver. I don't want to go slow. You have to keep the handle pushed forward the whole time. Don't ruin this for me. And I like that was the last place in the world I wanted to be. And she kept saying to me, just be bigger, better, braver. Just be bigger, better, braver. And I like, you know, I was shaking. I did it, but I was shaking like a leaf. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> sometimes you just gotta do it anyway. Absolutely. <laughs> I love that story and that example. And it's like, it's so funny because, you know, you were challenged where like, you've had this deep kind of fear about roller coasters, but like an eight-year-old is sitting there. And so it's not always these like monumental steps that we have to right. take, like, you know, sitting in the roller coaster and pushing the thing forward. Like, that's it right there. Yeah. I had, I had, I had the whole talk saying, I've never heard anybody die on this roller coaster. Like, I don't think. I can take it too fast that I'm going to fall off. Yep. I, I, but I was really, I seriously was scared for my life. Like I'm, I, that's just a fear that I never got over. I never liked rides. Yeah. And some people love them. My grandchildren love them. I gotcha. I gotcha. Do you have any like daily habits you do to make sure you're keeping yourself aligned or keeping yourself um, set up? Or have you kind of done so much of the work that it's just automatic throughout the day? Well, I eat really healthy. I go to sleep between 8.30 and 9.30 at night. I'm there we go. Six. I drink a lot of water. I only eat organic. I'm really a clean eater. Um, and I exercise seven days a week. So unlike most people, my challenge is to not allow myself to do more than two exercise activities in a day. That's literally like a rule for myself because I've gotten, you know, adrenal fatigue and I got 
cancer because I let my immune system down. Like I am an overexerciser. I under, I get it. And so I have rules for myself about that because left to my own, I could go skiing, then I could go hiking up the mountain, then I could go take a yoga class, like in between my clients. So on a, so that's another thing that keeps me balanced is I have to make sure I have enough clients to keep me from over-exercising. That is such an interesting like thing to have to monitor because most people are like, I need to make sure I exercise. You're like, I need to make sure I don't exercise too much. It's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's really true. And I know it about myself. So, you know, you need to know, you need to know those things about yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Well, if there were one or two people that you could meet right now, and it could be a specific person or a type of person, and they'd really help you take that next step toward your dreams and goals, who would that person be and how would they help you? Uh, one of them would be Terry Real, who is the um, head of this um, relational life therapy that I'm in. And I do get to see him on Zoom and in phone calls, but I would love to like really know him and have him really know me and mentor me, you know, really dial me in even more than I am with everything I'm doing. So that's, that's one. Um, that's really the only person that comes to mind that, I think would really rock me to the next level right now, but I'm always meeting very cool people. My sons are into very cool things and they know a lot of really, you know, they're very holistic and they know a lot of mentors and trainers and all kinds of things. So um, I'm open, you know, I'm on podcasts all the time. I'm meeting new people all the time. All of that just keeps enriching my life and, um, who I know and where I want to go next. And I don't say no to many things. So like if something comes in my path and then I get this like, oh, I I think I want to do that. That's my next thing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's awesome. And will you meet Terry Real through the program, like in a very formal manner? Yeah, you want to? Um, he, you know, originally he used to do everything live and then because of the pandemic he stopped doing a lot of things live and so he has two calls a month and I'm on those calls and so I can ask him questions so I kind of feel like over time even though there's so many people in the in these courses he'll get to know me a little and down the line I'll go to a boot camp or I'll go to a couple's experiential thing that he does and it'll happen yeah for sure for sure. Awesome. Well, now we're going to jump into our thriving three. And the first question is, what's your favorite book, movie, or podcast? Pick one. Okay. My favorite book, uh, besides Bigger, Better, Braver? Yeah, besides that. Um, <laughs> is The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. I think mm -hmm. it's phenomenal. Um, that's been my my go-to favorite book. But actually, um, Terry Real has three or four books out there right now that are amazing. One is called Us, one is called The New Rules of Marriage, and one is an audible called Fierce Intimacy, which I think is phenomenal. Fierce Intimacy. Fierce Intimacy. Mm -hmm. Interesting. What's that one yeah. about? It's about being in relationship with a partner and being willing to speak your truth and but hold yourself in warm regard at the same time and so it's how you ask for things and how you say things and how you cherish your partner instead of being an adversary yeah so it's like being strong enough to not need to be right to not need to control and yet get your needs met and let your partner's needs get met also I got you. I got you. Interesting. And what's one way you like to take care of yourself? Oh, what what was that? I said it's great for everybody. Mm -hmm. And what's one way you like to take care of yourself? Um, I have no problem taking care of myself. <laughs> Everything I do. Everything I do. Everything I do. I'm getting a massage when we hang up after this. <laughs> I get a massage once a week. Um, you know, I have a lot of self-care. 
I have downtime. I have learned to balance my working in with my working out. And um, I like people. So I have a lot of friends. I like to connect with family. I like to connect with my friends. It's really important to me. And, um, and then I'm out in nature every day. Like, how can you, that's how I take care of myself. Yeah, absolutely. This next question just honestly isn't relevant to you at all. So I'm not going to ask it. It was going to be, what is the action step you can take to meet Terry real, but you're already doing that and taking it. Um, so. Yeah. I eventually I will make, I will go to something that, that he's doing live. Mm -hmm. And how often does he do live things? Well, he's actually doing one soon, but it's interesting. He's trying to be more, have more diversity. So the, so the couples and the, the coaches and therapists that are part of it have to have some kind of, they have to be BIPOC or race, you know, different, they have to be a different race. They have to be, um, they can't just be your white female or white male mm -hmm. person, heterosexual person. So he's trying to just make more room for other people. And so this next experiential, I can, I can't, I couldn't have gone to. I can watch it, which I will and be a part of it that way, but I, I couldn't be there in person. Gotcha. 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 Okay. Well, we got one last question for you, Nancy. Okay. And I, I want to frame this next question. So Alex Hormozy, do you know who that is? Mm. Uh, he's a boss. He's on YouTube. Big, big okay. name entrepreneur guy. Eric uh, who? His name is Alex Hormozy. Hey, Alex? Okay. Mm -hmm. He said that the difference between manipulation and help is intent. And so I think yeah. his point here is that you're influencing people in both situations, but manipulation is getting somebody to do something you want them to do, while help is about seeking to understand what somebody else wants and then helping them get there. Mm -hmm. So this question is going to be about help not manipulation. Okay. There's a common saying that you can lead a horse to water, but you can't right. make it drink. Right. I actually found out from Dr. Alan Leica, who's a guest on my show, that you can make a horse drink. You just have to salt its oats. Right. Right. I want you to think of a person with a fixed mindset. They're not really willing to accept help, not willing to accept change, but they also hate their life. Mm -hmm. How do we create an environment not to make the choice for them, but to salt their oats and help them change their life? It's a great question. I was on his podcast, by the way. Yeah? Yeah. Um, I think that, and it kind of goes with the manipulation part that you said. If you let the person know that you have no agenda, <laughs> you know, like sometimes I'll say to my clients, this is what I think you need to do. And if you don't want to do it, you don't have to do it. But this will be, you're going to stay in your miserable life. And <laughs> I'm going to hang up the phone and go back to my happy life. So I have no attachment to what you do. I'm honestly telling you that if you don't do it, this is what I think will happen. And if you do do it, this is what I think will happen. And the choice is yours. It does not affect my life. And I, I think that. that's that's actually the opposite of manipulation, although maybe it's manipulating a little, but you're just being honest. You're basically saying this, yeah. like, or I, sometimes I'll say to somebody, well, I, I'm confused. Why, why are you here? Mm -hmm. Like you're miserable and you want to change, but you're not willing to do anything to make that happen. So so far, all you're doing is paying me the big bucks and you're not doing anything. Yep. Yep. No, I think that honest, clear communication, I think that's some of the best way to help people. I was talking with somebody earlier on the show and they they were, they brought up the point that when it comes to salt and the oats or creating that environment, a lot of what we need to do is just not enable. Like so many of us are just enabling people in our lives to kind of stay where they're at, stay miserable and maybe we're commiserating with them like 
We're colluding. We collude with them. There we go. I, I was like, commiserating is not the word. I was looking for. Colluding. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that honest, clear communication, or sometimes cutting that line off of like, look, I'm, I'm not going to tolerate you being miserable and horrible. I'm going to go live my best life. If you want to come, please come with me. I want you to come with me. But if you don't want to come, I'm not going to sit here and be miserable with you. Right. Right. Fair. Exactly. I'm go. I'm. I'm hanging up the phone and. I'm going back to my happy life and you can stay miserable as long as you want to. Yep. It's a Absolutely. choice. Well, awesome. Nancy, that's all we got for you. Is there anything else you want to chat about before we sign off? Um, What's your next big thing? Yeah. Yeah. My next big thing is really just continuing the podcast. I love helping people with their dreams and goals and getting them to, um, hone their skills, character traits, and beliefs such that they can accomplish the things they want to accomplish. And so I think part of that is asking great questions. I think another part of that is creating more space for that to happen. So right now it only happens through the podcast. There's no real back-end coaching offer. There's no marketing funnel into a coaching offer. And so building some of that out in a sustainable, consistent way that like continues to give me energy. So I want to run this event in Austin so I guess to give you where a, you live? Yes, I live in Austin, Texas. I have a son and daughter in law and grandfather that just moved there last year. There we go. That's so cool. Uh -huh. That's There's so a lot cool. of cool people in Austin. Oh, so a many. lot of coaches, a lot of really cool when I'm telling them that my sons have all these cool people, half of them are from Austin. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I really want to create this local event in Austin where we gather people and we just build genuine relationship and connection designed to push us forward. And so a lot of these questions I'm asking on the podcast are meant to help you think about the life you want and how you can get there. And so right. I want to get a bunch of people together, have them eating together and, you know, small groups of six, they ask each other the questions. And then those that are willing to be held accountable and um, for their desires and take action together in a community, that's when the offer will be presented to them. For those who don't, you know, you ask the questions, you got to thought about it, you got to think about it, you can go back to the life you were living by any means. So that's kind of the cool. thing I really want to get together right now, especially because the church I go to is very, um, church just kind of upsets me because it doesn't leave enough room for like genuine, authentic connection and actually living life together. Like they do a lot of the like systematic stuff and just traditional stuff. But when it comes to actually improving our lives together, that's not very present. And so I really want this event to be, a thing so that a friends from my church, but B people from all churches can come and actually build relationships with people and actually improve their life together. And then, you know, you can build these little pockets of community, but this overall community in the Austin area where we're like, sounds great towards it. So yeah. keep your eyes open for Jared Picard. He's Jared Picard. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I will definitely, great. definitely keep my eyes all open. Right. Well, Nancy, thank you so much. It's fun. Absolutely. Have a great night. Take care. You too. And if you guys are listening to this and you loved what Nancy had to say, make sure to check her out. All the links to do so will be down in the show notes. Thank you guys for watching. We will see you on the next one. And on that note, we're out.